largest and most powerful Buddhist education base in the world. <laughs> Hello and Tashi Delic to everyone. This is Chamyang from Tibet, the roof of the world. I'm a local tour guide here in Tibet. We travel non-stop for the last three years inside every corner of Tibet so that I can show you the original Tibet and can let you have real local experience when traveling with me. I am currently in Lhasa and today I'm gonna take you to visit the largest and the most powerful monastery in Tibet. I have to drive like five kilometers from here to Drepung Monastery, the monastery which is 600 years old and used to be home for 8,800 monks. We are very close to Tibetan New Year so that's why everyone is so busy after their shopping for the new year. So I believe now we are going to start visiting the Drepung Monastery it's so 3,900 meters above sea level. So in the past times, there are 8,800 monks living and studying in this monastery. So it must be like really, really lively and so interesting back in the early days. The monastery was founded in 1416 by Jamyang Chunje Tashi Pandem, one of Tsongkhapa's disciples, namely the second Dalai Lama founded this Drepung monastery. And here, you guys have to know something interesting. This is the incense that the locals are burning. So burning incense is consisted an extraordinary and sacred offering made to the Buddha. And it represents one of the rituals to show the reverence and devotion of the Buddhist. And this is the longevity stupa. So if you want to live long, you have to come here and pray. And these are all the monks' resistances. Where over 8,000 monks, they would live in this dormitory in the white buildings. Ten years ago, there's nothing here, just few houses. But now, look at this amazing development. As I told you before, prayer wells are away. They store holy scriptures inside, and they are constantly spinning wheel, which represents they are reading those holy scriptures. And here, you can see the most beautiful mantra of Tibetan Buddhism. Om Mani Pe Hum. This is a very common mantra in Tibetan Buddhism and this is the mantra of compassion. Buddha, if you chant this mantra, we believe it brings happiness and peace to every living being. And definitely, if you have friends or connections with the Tibetans, you definitely can hear it from them. And right behind me, there you can see the image of a great master Tsongkhapa on the rock painting. So Tsongkhapa, which means a man from Onion Valley, he is a Tibetan Buddhist master, philosopher and a tantric yoga. He was born in 1357 and passed away in 1419. And he founded the Gelugpa sect of a Tibetan Buddhism. And right beside him, you can see the two image of his two main disciples, Gelugpa and Kiltupje, respectively founded Drepung and Sera Monastery. And just below the Master Tsongkhapa, you can see the image of a Garuda, which is the main, main protector 
of Tibetan Buddhism and his statue or his image are always placed on the throne of a Buddhist Shakyamuni. And right now we are here at Ganden Potang or Ganden Palace. All the highest monks and masters are in this palace back in the old days. And it is originally referred to the residential quarters of the Dalai Lama since the second Dalai Lama and when the fifth Dalai Lama came to power and the expansion of the Potala Palace began, the Dalai Lama moved away from the actual quarters Ganden Potang and stayed at the Potala Palace in winter. And Ganden is a Tibetan name for heaven and Potrang means palace. <laughs> Drepung is known as the most important monastery of the Gelukpa in Tibetan Buddhism. The Gelupa sect is the largest and most important school of thoughts founded in the 15th century by great master Tsongkhapa. He is a philosopher and a Tibetan religious leader. Adherence to the Gelupa sect is consisted to be purest form of a Tibetan Buddhism. Look at these beautiful dwellings of the monks. So this kind of stair is the original Tibetan stair. It is at least like 600 years ago. The throne of the great fifth Dalai Lama. And look at all the scripture. Those are all the holy text, holy scripture. And you see all those paintings here represent the wheel of death. And you see those weapons were all used to kill before. But nowadays people bring it here because they're so in front of the Buddha that they will never kill any lives again. Drepung Monastery, seen from afar, its grand white constructions give the appearance of a heap of a rice. As such, it was given the name Drepung, which in the Tibetan language means rice heap. Here we can see some old stoves back from 600 years ago but when they have big ceremony in the monastery then they are using it again. And here we have the souvenir shop. You can buy all the different blessings from the monastery. All those amulets are for the car, for protection from a natural disaster. So all the sorcery here. This is a picture of all the monks that live in this monastery. There are about 1,000 monks in the picture, but there used to be 8,800 monks. So right now, I just arrived here at the biggest assembly hall of the Drepung Monastery. That's the largest assembly hall of the Drepung Monastery and from outside it looks not that big but they can fit like 20,000 people inside there. And all this area is used for a debating in early days. So the masters sit on this throne and the monks will sit here on the ground. And then they debate the philosophy of Tibetan Buddhism. And something you will notice when you are walking around the monastery it's just the amount of gold and yellow that's everywhere and this is representation of Buddhism and another thing you will notice is a lot of people are carrying canister, jugs of butter 
and they're actually putting them into the butter lamps. But nowadays we often use vegetable oils or wanaspati ghee. And the butter lamps helps to focus the mind and aid meditation. And also to gain merit. This is the monastery kitchen and 8,000 monks used to cook in this kitchen. And right opposite is the largest assembly hall of the Drebung Monastery. And when we have a special ceremony, 8,000 monks are gathering in this assembly hall. So Drebung was known for the high standard of its academic study and was called Nalinda of Tibet, which means a reference to the great Buddhist monastic University of India. And Drepung Monastery is divided into seven great colleges. It can be somewhat useful analogy to think of Drepung as emphasis teaching lineages or traditional geographical affiliations. This side is Bowman College and this is Loseling College. Here's the Yamandaka, main relics of Tantric College. So now we are here at Gomang College. We have visited all those different colleges here. They are actually the same as a college like Oxford University, Tibet University, Beijing University and they are studying mainly the philosophy of Buddhism so this is only the difference All this here is called Tata in Tibetan language and it is formed of a traditional Buddhist art. These are traditional made with clear, but nowadays they use durable materials such as resin, plaster, hydrostone, and even pewter. We believe that making tatsa is a merit accumulating action to purify negatives and create positive energy. And usually tatsa can be placed on our altars, inside stupas, under prayer walls, and at holy sites such as meditation caves, mountains, and lakes. And let me make one tatsa. This is how I made my tata. So that's the Drepung Monastery restaurant. And it's time for lunch. Mm. I really, really recommend you guys to eat lunch in this restaurant after visiting the Drepung Monastery because here you can find a real local taste and it's a good place to experience to see what monks are eating in the monastery. That's all about the Drepung Monastery and I really really hope that you enjoyed watching my video and if you like my video please don't forget to give comments, likes and subscribe. This is Jamyang, welcome to Tibet. We are the one that can show you the original Tibet.